Welcome back to Asylum, a podcast from Habibi Works. In this series, you'll hear directly from those seeking asylum in Europe. Today, we meet a woman who dared step into the unknown, fleeing Afghanistan for an uncertain future. For this series, she goes by the name Zarina to keep her identity anonymous. This is the final chapter of a four-part series. Over the last three episodes, Zarina shared details of her journey, the months spent in detention, and the years spent in a camp in Katsikas. Shortly before sharing this story, Zarina had, after four years in Katsikas camp, received what she'd been waiting for, a positive asylum decision. And now, thank God that I took my asylum decision and I applied for the travel documents. We are now waiting to receive our travel documents. Finally, after four years, I was above the moon. (laughs) My family, they were also so happy. Though they helped me, they support me so much, my family. But again, when we go to other country, when you will take the travel documents, Again, we start from zero to ask asylum there, to go from the same procedure, to give the same interview and to wait for the answer. It's only to take the travel documents, to fly from here legally. Because now the rule has been changed in Greece also. The people who are going to fly illegally, if they arrest them, they will not going to be given the travel documents anymore. So this is the only chance that the people can move on or fly on of this country. Because this country is not, okay, this country is safe, but mentally it's not safe for, for us. The situation is like survival. We are just only survive ourselves here. Everything is not permanently, it's temporary. We have lost our patience. We have lost our smile, laughing. We are only, the only hope here is <laughs> to take the uh, travel documents, and that's it. <laughs> now, in other countries, we are listening from our friends how they behave with refugees and how they are asking for asylum and how they are going through the process and how they are supporting them until they get on their feet. While we are comparing these two countries, it's totally hell for refugees, this country. That's why every refugees, they want to leave this country. Yeah, I get so much emotion. That's why I'm afraid to face the doctors. That's why I'm afraid to face the psychologists. Because everywhere, if you go, they will ask the same things. And I get so emotional soon because I have been in difficulties only by my own. And I show my family that I'm very strong. And I was only hoping uh, to see my mom again. And for that hope, I'm living. I was, when I was working, I was feeling so free, like moving on so easily. But now that uh, it's difficult here to find job also. I was a gynecologist, but now that I am a housewife and facing the problem for both gender, for female and male, is difficult, this situation. In Afghan tradition, like the females, they just sit and ask their necessities from male. So it's totally difficult for them also. It, they cannot communicate with them in their language. They cannot find permanent job here. And it's somehow so difficult for them. It affects females also. I'm very happy that my man is next to me in this situation. When I'm imagining being alone here, mentally it's, it's horrible. When Anytime I'm sitting and thinking about the, the journey that I have started, and I just think if my husband was not with me, if I was travel all the journey alone, so I get 
so much depressed. Also, I feel that depression in this situation now. When I see the lights of the roads, I imagine the, <laughs> the same road that I entered the first time in Greece. It just uh, it's a kind of feelings that really make us it's just we are dealing with these things mentally also physically also everyone is hoping to leave and we don't know what will going to happen for those who will going to arrive in these years what will going to happen with them because the asylum to exist in asylum now is difficult it's really like a nightmare to live in a nightmare for four years is difficult. <laughs> we only hope to end this journey as soon as possible. After four years of waiting and hoping, the moment Zarina received her positive asylum decision must have been one of such relief and joy. Finally, she could reunite with her family. Finally, she could be free. Thank you for listening to Asylum, a podcast by Habibi Works. Please share the podcast and tell your friends about it, because we want as many people as possible to hear Zarina's story. <laughs>